What's up everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we are gonna be exploring DAS 3D and how it works. If you have seen some of my previous videos, you must have noticed that I use a lot of 3D characters in my digital art. I mostly use them as base and then I just paint over them and use a lot of photos to create some really cool artwork. Some of you might think, Imad, why would you use 3D when you can just draw these characters? Well, it's mostly to save time. When you have a lot of projects, Projects, a lot of deadlines to meet, you have to find creative solutions to make everything quicker and get the desired results. And sure, I would just draw these characters if I had the time, but setting up the 3D has a lot of advantages. I can just move around the setting, try different camera angles, try different lighting scenarios, move everything around and recompose everything in real time. And we don't have that luxury while drawing. If I am trying to visualize something polished through drawing, I have to spend and probably a lot of hours on it until I am able to see the result. I have to commit to that drawing. But with 3D, everything is much more quicker. So yeah, that all comes down to personal preference and also depends on how much time you want to spend on your artwork. So like I said, we're just going to explore Daz 3D, learn how to set up a 3D scene, how to pose characters, how to change their clothing, how to copy characters, how to render it for your photo bashing and everything that would help you along the process of creating a digital art using 3D. By the way, this is not a sponsored video. Daz did not sponsor me. This is just a software that I have been using for a long time and it has helped me with a lot of my projects. But if you're someone from Daz, Daz, hit me up. I'd love to work with you. By the way, do you know that I have a weekly newsletter? What? You haven't subscribed to it yet? That's fine, but I've put a link in the description. You should definitely check that out. The latest post on that newsletter is about 10 things every digital illustrator must have in order to get hired. So that's an important topic and that's some useful information that you wouldn't want to miss out. So if you think that would be helpful, go check out my newsletter and subscribe to it. So so without wasting any more time, let's do this. So when you open DAS Studio, this is what the interface looks like. On the left, we have these different things like cameras, environments, figures, hair, lights, materials, props, stuff like that. And on the right, we have this thing called node, which is basically the layers. It's, it's very similar to what the layers are in Photoshop. And here we have the content library, smart content, render settings, and stuff like that. These are basically the three things that you would need. So the most important thing of all is this smart content right here. This is the stuff that that I would use mostly. This is my entire library of 3D models that I have acquired over years working on different projects. So if I get a project related to, let's say, pirates, so I go to Dash Door, search for some pirate 3D models and I download them. And later on in the future, if I get some more pirate related projects, the good thing is that I already have a library that I can use, right? So if I go to figures, we have all these character models that we have. These are basically actors in, in Dash Studio's term. We even have it written on here as well so we could think of these 3d models as actors for your scene or for your illustration or anything so each of these actors have their name like we have edward here and then we have wins and we have mr Wu. so these are different actors that we could use for our projects so let's say if i get a project related to samurais maybe i have to create a scene where i have to show a young samurai training with his master right so i have these two actors that could fit perfectly in that role so if i click on lee let's say so I just double clicked on Lee and we have the 3D model of Lee here. Now you'd be able to see this little sphere right here. If you click on it, you'd be able to see different settings that you could view this character in. So if I go to smooth shaded, it gives me this clay type of uh, rendering. And if I go to, let's say texture shaded, it shows all the textures that this model has. But if I go to Nvidia iRay, it renders it realistically for me so let's keep it on smooth shaded because this way it runs fast so you might also notice that I am 
rotating the scene using these buttons right here. I am not quite sure what the shortcuts are for these. I never searched them. I have been using uh, I've been using these controls from the very beginning, so I'm really comfortable with these. So if I have to rotate it, I click on this and click and hold and then move my mouse to just rotate this. And if I if I need to pan, I just click on this one, not just click, but click and hold. And then I move the mouse and the camera would pan. And similarly, if I need to zoom in, I could click on this and move the mouse up and down. For zooming in and out on my MacBook, I could also use two fingers on the trackpad. So if I move my two fingers upwards, it would zoom in. And if I move my two fingers downwards, it would zoom out. So that's the basic control. Now here you can also see that we have these layers. So we have Lee 8. Now we need to put some clothes on Mr. Lee. So we are going to wardrobe on the left and we have a lot of stuff to choose from. So since we were talking about a scene where we can build a samurai training with his master, I could search for a clothing that would fit in that scenario. So I do have a samurai outfit. I just double clicked on it and automatically appear on the character. But now we have our samurai character. So here on the right, we have the layers. Let's think of this Lee 8 as a group, right? So if I click on this drop down, it contains everything that is linked to this character. This is the sash. This is the sandals, the shirt. We could do a shirtless samurai. Looks like more of a peasant than a samurai. So let's put it back on. And now if we go to texture shaded, we can see all the textures. Now, some of these clothes have different alternate materials and colors as well. So if I go to this shirt, let's say if I click on the shirt layer and go to materials on the left side, you can see that I have different colors that I can apply on on the character. If I want to make it dark green, light green or something fancy like this. Wow, this looks cool as well. Similarly, I can change the colors for the pants and for basically everything. I like this one a lot better. Sandals. Let's keep the sandals. I'll go with some dark socks. So yeah, now our samurai is customized. So now that we have our samurai ready, it's time to pose the character. But before posing the character in a really cool way, way, I'd also like to show something else. So if I need to access anything from here, I would just click and select the group first and then go to any of these items. So let's go to the props and here we'll find a samurai sword that this dude can hold. As you can see, I have a library of a lot of things and here we have the sword. So we have two settings here. We can make him hold the sword on the right hand and we could make him hold on the left hand. So let's double click on this right hand and there we have it. Let's remove one of the swords. So in order to do that, I'm just going to click this. It shows the layer on the right side and I could just hide it. So now this sword is basically in his hand, right? I'm once again selecting the group and then I'm going to poses. So I have a lot of poses right here, which I can choose from. I'm going to look for a pose that fits a samurai, of course. So I'm scrolling scrolling down and down. This could do well. This looks like a really unprofessional samurai. <laughs> Just to show you the possibility, I'm just going to select any other pose and we could go from there. Let's actually go with this one. Now, if we want to duplicate this character, it's a bit tricky. I'm just going to select the group and then I'm going to go into edit. I know you can't see the edit tab, but it is certainly the edit tab that I'm just accessing right now. So just trust me on this one. And then you go to duplicate and duplicate node hierarchies. And now we have Lee 2. So I can move it around and maybe rotate it to face the other samurai. Let's rotate it even further and then move it like this. 
So now we have a scene with two samurais. Now I can just change the color of this samurai just to add some distinction, just to make him look different from the other one. And I could also, you know, let's get rid of the hairband and just give him some hair. How about this one? Looking good. Now we could also change the pose as well. Once again, struggling with which pose to choose and now he's swinging the sword in the wrong direction let's choose something else yep this could work so another really important aspect of das studio is the ability to pose the character so i have to now fine tune the poses right let's say this character is at a height and jumping to attack now this character is looking down he should be looking at this dude jumping over him so i'll just select the head and click on this rotate button and then just rotate the head upwards a little bit and there's a limit to how much i can rotate upwards so i'm just gonna go to the neck and and move the neck upwards so i could also just click on any part of the model click and hold and then just move it just to pose these characters so it's really it's really intuitive and it's really fun to do i can just click on the hand and just move it upwards a little creation of adam moment if you are aware of the art history let's do it like this and now we have a different pose now it looks like this dude is not ready for this attack he looks helpless so yeah we can easily pose these characters and now if i go to the the nvidia i ray we can view a rendered view of this uh, of this 3d scene so if you go to the layers you could also see some environment options so if i click on that i have all these options to choose from now the environment mode is set to dome and scene so if i set it to dome only it basically applies the lighting from the hdri and if i click on draw dome it actually shows me that hdri and if i click on off it makes the the hdri disappear and we are only left with the lighting so now if i mess around with dome rotation you can notice that the shadow is moving and we could actually change the lighting of the scene so we can choose any of the light that we need and then any of the angle that we require and then we click on render so now it's rendering my 3d scene i really like the fact that the render looks really realistic and we have a transparent background on this render so we can just put this render right onto photoshop and just add a bunch of photos in the background or just paint over these characters really quickly the level of detail and quality on these characters are really good and if i even need to change the clothing of these characters i can just put some photos on top of these characters and just go from there it's a really useful and quick workflow this was the basics of how i use daz 3d to speed up my workflow all right i hope this video was helpful and hope you found something new if you did please don't forget to leave a like comment down below and let me know your thoughts if you choose to work on daz 3d just share your creations with me tag me on instagram if you're new to this channel hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos all right i'll see you in the next one take care Bye bye